G'day guys, Mark here from Nine Empire, and in this episode we get this Beta 6 cylinder XY Falcon Utility up and running. Maybe. I haven't tried yet. <laughs> Alright guys, so Andrea bought this car oh, months ago, I don't even know, maybe six, eight months ago and we haven't got around to it. We were going to sort of, you know, standard stuff, fix it up, all that sort of thing, but we haven't got around to it yet. And um, for those of you who follow the channel, you'll know that we put a little bit up for sale recently to try and move some projects on. Unfinished projects, which goes against the grain, but it's for a good reason. We have some other things happening behind the scenes and uh, to help that all work, we need to clear up some space, clear up some money. So we thought we'd put this up for sale, see if we're getting interest, and um, I'm gonna start with trying to fire it up. We haven't even tried to turn the key. So it's been sitting, awaiting its turn. So I'm gonna throw a battery in it now, put a bit of uh, fuel down the carby, and see if we get a bang. From there, it's just a matter of cleaning it up, making it look somewhat respectable, and put it online, see what happens. So one of the first things I want to do is uh, I've got some degreaser on the engine and engine bay. I'm going to get back here and try and identify if this engine is the factory matching numbers motor. People want to know that stuff. It looks like it's a factory 250 car. Um, so if we can identify this as a factory motor, that's a big selling point. People want that stuff for some reason. That's what people want. So we'll clean this up before I even try and turn the key. Let's see how we go. Unfortunately, we lucked out on the engine. It's not a matching numbers. That's a JG23, which of course means Falcon 500 sedan. Uh, the Ute is a Falcon utility, so that's JG40 as a prefix on the uh, body number. And looking, decoding this car, it's actually a yellow ochre with a factory uh, column shift manual and a saddle trim. But someone's changed the column. This hasn't got an allocation for a shifter. It's been changed to a floor shift and I think it's got a four speed in it as well. So look, it's been a bit messed with over the years, as you can tell by the general look of the thing, but that doesn't matter. It's still a worthy candidate for a uh, rebuild or to at least get it back on the road. So we'll continue cleaning it up, see how it looks by the end of the day. Riveting stuff here, swapping batteries. I've got to capture all this. Someone's made a aftermarket battery cradle. A few questionable things happening on this vehicle. So the no key situation might be an issue. <sighs> See what we can find, otherwise we might have to do a bit of a hot wire. Awesome. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna try this hot wire at the starter only. All right, so now we just need some ignition. So I'm either gonna pull the barrel out, hot wire it behind there, or we'll connect up some positive to the to the coil and see if we can get a spark, and then we'll add some fuel. Go again. Okay guys, so here's a little bit of a tip for those who want to get into the car market on a budget. You just need to get the car you wish to attain. A bit of uh, speaker wire. You want to connect straight to the uh, positive on the coil, which is usually where the ignition system would feed. And you want to run straight to the positive on the battery. 
and then hypothetically, you should have a full circuit with ignition. So ignition should be on right now. And if this starts, you've just scored yourself a free car. <laughs> Let's put a bit of fuel down the guts and see what happens. I should just try this. Try with a good degreaser so all the people watching at home can tell me that it ruins your engine. All right, so we're at the front here. We definitely are not in gear. And we genuinely have never tried this before. Apparently it was run when parked. One of those. Yes! <laughs> oh, that first bang is so good. Uh, let's put some actual fuel in it and see what happens. Okie dokie, schmoky. We are moving. And we're just going to check some vital signs here. So we got some oil, as you can see there. Looks like it's been serviced recently. But there's enough in that to run. Uh, we'll check the water. This whole... Oh, yep, yeah, that's good. So that's meant to sort of stay connected to that. So... Yep, that's sweet. So that's dry as a nun's nasties. So, all right. So we'll call that good. It's got water in it. There actually is water in it, not, not lying, but I will top that up. Obviously we can't run it for any extended period without a radiator lid. A radiator cap, I should say. Um, oil was fine. Now, this is a manual, so we're gonna check the master cylinder, which is, oh, it's actually got some in it. That's a bonus. As soon as it goes dry, you bleed, you're bleeding in a system, so you don't want it dry. A little bit we can deal with. I can put a little bit more in there. But dry, that's not good. Last thing I wanna check is the brake master cylinder. So find my screwdriver levering device. All right, so brake master, hopefully this has some juice in it. Both pots, front and back. It is absolutely chock-a-block full, overflowing. So that's hopefully a good sign. So we might have brakes, we might have a clutch. We know we've got spark. Far out. Uh, all that's left is it to actually run. So when Andrew is back from the servo, we'll throw a bit of fuel down the guts of this thing see if it actually runs and idles and then I might just cut to the chase like I always do disconnect the fuel system connect up to one under the bonnet here to disregard any crap that may be in the fuel lines or in the fuel tank because that's that's a job that no one wants to deal with when they're just trying to get something running spare at the moment so we'll get that sorted and then um, yeah we can advertise this as a running car then I'll jump in the car put it in gear and see if it wants to move under its own power baby steps let's not get ahead of ourselves so Andy's back with the fuel but now it's pouring down I could bring it in the shed but we wanted to hose it off uh, there's a little bit of cover here. We're just going to quickly make a little makeshift fuel system, my go-to, to save any headaches with crappy lines. So we're going to quickly do that now, throw some fuel in the guts, and this is going to run and just purr like a kitten. Right? So your easiest access, this would usually be a steel line from the, along the body, but someone's obviously already run a... Oh, I'm gonna move. This car's moving. Let me just sort this out first. Oh, no, 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 no. Alright. There's actually fuel in it. Holy hell, look at that. There is fuel in this. Which means it's probably okay. Uh, I don't trust it, so we're just gonna put some fuel in it anyway. You can see, it's kind of it almost even clear as well. Usually that's all sappy if it's been sitting for a long time, but like I said, we don't trust it. For the sake of running a little bit of fuel line into this bad boy, we're gonna save a heap of headaches. We can reconnect that back up to the tank anytime. 
There's a few filters, there's a few filters in line, but not today. All right, so that bowl's kind of full, full enough. Now we put our system in here. It's nestled snug, snugly between the uh, bottom radiator hose. We have a clean fuel system with fresh fuel, bypassing any potential issues. We should have a uh, we should have a carby bowl full of fuel as well. So now, with our new makeshift ignition system, aka free vehicle, jump start this now at the uh, starter motor, and it's just going to purr. Maybe I'll set the choke. I'm gonna set the choke that's been cold as. <laughs> that's ridiculous. Oh man. It hasn't happened. The lifters went away quiet as. See that noise just disappear? Wow. It's too good now. <laughs> wow, that's awesome. I believe him now. I believe him now. Ran when parked. This is amazing. Who knows how many users have been sitting for? Sick. but I'll top it up, even without a radiator cap. We can let it idle for a little while. I might even be able to see if it wants to move under its own power. It might be able to do a hot lap around the car park. <laughs> smells a bit funky. It smells a bit funky, yeah. <laughs> Probably just the, the, the greaser burning off. Oh, maybe. It's probably the greaser before I started. Sick. It doesn't even feel like it's um, been sitting. It just feels like it's someone's car, and it works. Clutch feels good. Brakes are a bit hard, but holy shit balls! I'm 
build that up again and put a radiator cap on it. But apart from that, man, this thing is so good. Why did we do this earlier? <laughs> So we got the car 99% ready to go, got it out, taken some photos, and then it started pouring. So luckily we got some cover here. But overall, that was a successful little afternoon. We didn't plan on actually going this far. We we're just gonna sort of empty the car out and take some quick snaps of it, but have the thing running, absolutely pumped. So it runs, it drives, it stops, it shifts, clutch feels good, brakes a little bit firm, but aside from that, man, it's like, touch that starter motor and she's idling. Side. It's actually not the worst. It's got a bit of rust down here. The floor looks like it needs a bit of attention, but overall, it's not the worst I've seen by any stretch. It's an absolute basket case inside, but hey, anything savable with a few little changes, uh, a little bit of TLC. This could be a pretty cool little cruiser. Even done like a container car is pretty cool, but. Anyway, we're going to try and get some snaps of this thing, get it online. That's going to be it for this time around.